After an opening day victory at home, the Bourne Braves are on the road for the first time this season tonight. Hello everyone and welcome into Stony Brook Field here in Brewster. I'm Adam Gacken alongside Nathan Schwartz and Cam Manna ahead of the Braves taking on the Whitecaps. And Nathan, starting off with you, Wyatt Parliament on the mound today for the Braves. He's a guy at Virginia Tech and he's got some pretty good stuff. Yeah, the rising senior at Virginia Tech. He spent his first two years at Rutgers, makes the move over to the ACC, and he had a pretty solid year with the Hokies through over 43 innings, had 60 strikeouts. That strikeout to walk ratio really favored the strikeouts. I'm excited to see how his three pitch mix of a fastball, a slider, and a changeup plays here in Brewster today. Yeah, and that good uh, walk to strikeout ratio, definitely a big thing in summer ball. You see a lot of pitchers can struggle with command early on. Well, on the offensive side for the Braves last night, we saw a lot of aggressiveness on the base pass. That's nothing new to Bourne, and I think especially early in the season, it can really help out. Small ball, and they've been kind of greedy baseball. They were bottom of the Cape League last year in home runs with 15, but they were top by 20, over 100 stolen bases for this squad. Clay Grady had three last night. That's the most for a Bourne Braves player on opening day since 2010. The team had five as a whole, so what this group brings together on the base path, Scott Landers loves to run. He's not afraid to do it, and he brought it up. Not a lot of extra base hits right now, but if you get a guy on first, moving to second, we saw the double steals. It does wonders for an offense. Oh, it absolutely does. It brought him nine runs last night, which is not at all a small feat on opening day, but a bit of a change in the lineup today. We've got a couple changes today, don't we? Okay, we've got four new faces in the Warren lineup. First, we have Merrick Houston. He's going to play shortstop, and he's going to bat second. Then you go to the bottom third of Warren's lineup today, Davis Gillespie. The outfielder from Southern Miss is going to bat seventh. Landon Vitterick from Cincinnati is going to bat eighth. And then the backstop from Ohio State, Matthew Gravel, is going to bat ninth. It's very, very important to get everyone involved early in the season. The Bravos hoping to go 2 0 on the season today. Stay tuned here on Tomahawk Talk for some more pregame coverage. Adam Gacken here with Nick Rosselli ahead of the Bourne Braves' first away game of the season here against the Brewster Whitecaps. And Nick, you guys had a great opening day victory last night. Nine runs on the board. You scored three of them. How good does it feel when everyone can get on base? Yeah, you know, I mean, baseball is very contagious, really contagious sport. So just trying to help out the team and everyone else follows. And you're a guy from a smaller conference. You come from the American East and SUNY Binghamton. What's your experience been like so far just on the Cape? It's awesome. I mean, the vibe's super loose. Everyone's super cool, and uh, everyone's easy going. You had an injury early in this spring season, but came back towards the end, and you know now back in the full swing of things. Just how good does it feel to just be playing baseball again? Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. I mean, one of my goals in life was to play in this league, so it's awesome to be here now. You said it right there. One of your goals in life is to play in this league. You know, is it kind of everything you've expected so far in the first week? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a ton of fun, and again, the vibe's super loose, which. I mean, that's how everyone plays their best. What's it like building chemistry in summer ball? You know, you played in the New England League last year, so you're used to it. What's it like when you have a bunch of guys from a bunch of different schools coming together? Yeah, I mean, everyone gels pretty fast. Um, you know, just a bunch of dudes coming to play some baseball. So I feel like everyone's easy going, and that's kind of usually how it goes. When you, you know, found out you were coming to Bourne, a team that's won back-to-back -back championships, that's been to three in a row, can I, what were your expectations on the, you know, kind of mood and vibe around the team, and do you feel like it's kind of fit that so far? Yeah, so I definitely expect, like, a little more intense vibe in the coaching staff and, you know, just taking everything very serious, which is exactly how it's been, but, you know, still keeping that loose atmosphere. What do you think are some of your biggest goals to work on personally this summer? You know, just seeing some uh, better competition and proving I belong. All right, well, thank you very much, Nick. Good luck today. Adam Gacken joined now by the beat reporter for the Bourne Braves, Sean Brennan. And Sean, this Brewster Whitecaps team, they've got an NAIA pitcher today at a Southeastern University in Darian Smith, and he is a guy who has dominated at the college level so far. Yeah, that's really the best word for it. 96 innings pitched and 130 strikeouts. I mean, talk about that. And what's more is that he has a sub-2 ERA through all of that. So large sample size at the NAIA level, but... Brewster had some good pitching last night, 15 strikeouts, only allowed two runs, and I expect to see some good pitching from their starter tonight. Yeah, it's always interesting with your NAIA, your D2, your D3 players, because some of them can prove that they can dominate at this level. We've seen it in the past, but you always also never know because they are not playing Division One, so they're not always playing the best of the best like a lot of the other players in the Cape League. Well, Brewster, on paper, has a roster that looks very dangerous, so much power just up and down the lineup. Yeah, didn't see much of that last night, but Nick Doomsnill and Nolan Schubert are two guys that have had at least 19 home runs in their respective college seasons, and you go up and down the list, there's a lot of power on this lineup, a lot of high slugging percentages, high home run, extra base hit numbers, and 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, like we talked about, there is that adjustment. But if even one of those guys can find it today, it's it's going to be tough for Bourne to, to overcome that. You said it there with you know them struggling to find it last time out against YD. That was a YD walk-off win, 2-1 to one in extra innings, especially with runners in scoring position. That's where Brewster struggled. Yeah, 0 for 13. It really was a story of missed opportunities. They they had a good amount of hits, but just couldn't capitalize, and you saw that 2-1 to one was your final in extra innings, and you just have to think about how different it could have been if they could have scraped some of those runs across, but they'll definitely be be looking to do that today so we'll see how Bourne's pitching can weather a dangerous lineup that's looking to be more efficient with runners in scoring position. Yeah we see that a lot early in the season in summer ball team struggling with runners in scoring position. Bourne did not yesterday they look like a mid-summer team. Well first pitch today here from Stony Brook Field is at 5 p.m. Let's go. That was great.